so you want to annoy your viewers with pop-ups like I do. Here is how simple it is. So let's say here I'm talking about weightlifting and you want to add some type of dumbbell pop-up that looks smooth and professional. So step one, you need to find some type of picture of a dumbbell. Now the issues with most pictures is they don't come as a PNG image, meaning this dumbbell is not cut out. So if we add this as a pop-up, it's gonna show up as this rectangular white picture with the dumbbell inside of it. But watch how easy this is. So right click, save image to downloads. And usually I'll drag this to my hard drive wherever I have all the files for that project. But just for this example, if I drag this to my desktop, if you right click that picture you just downloaded, go to quick actions and hit remove background, it will automatically remove that background for you. So for example, if we double click this, this is what it looked like originally. And now this is what it looks like. If this is something that blew you away a little bit, do me a solid and press the thumbs up button because it blew me away when my buddy Tyler taught this to me over Zoom. So thank you, Tyler. So whenever you have cut out what you want to be as your pop-up, click the PNG image and press Command C to copy. Head over to your project timeline and hit Option V. This is gonna paste that PNG image over the clip that you want, starting from wherever your playhead is. Now, some of you may be saying, why not Command V, Dylan? Why Option V? And that's because if we hit Command V, it inserts itself into the primary storyline, which in this instance, we don't really want. So let's press Command Z and hit Option V to have it above the clip where we would like. Now, what I use to animate my pop-ups is a free plugin called Tap5A by Tapio Haja, and I will put the link to this in the description. However, before you apply this, here are some best practices to do. For one, you wanna position the image wherever you would like it to pop up. So I'm gonna hit Shift T to bring up the transform tool. I'll scale down the image, and let's say I want it to end up in this upper left-hand corner of the frame. Then I'll just hit A to deselect the transform tool. Now don't make this mistake. Don't then add the plugin. Maybe choose an animation like fly from bottom. And here is why you shouldn't make this adjustment in this order. Notice how when we play this out, it's not actually flying from the bottom of the frame. So here is the fix. With your PNG image selected, press option G to create a new compound clip or right click the image and hit new compound clip we'll just rename it dumbbell if i could spell and now you'll add the plugin double click to apply and if you were to choose the same animation like fly from bottom now your animation will come from the bottom of the frame like you would like now this plugin seems very confusing but it's actually very easy you have 18 different animations to animate your picture in and 18 different animations to animate your picture out. This adjusts the time, so by swinging to the left, we can make the animation in speed faster, and by swinging to the right, we can make it much slower. So let's say we want it to be quick, we like fly from bottom, but on the animation out, we want it to perhaps zoom to out, and maybe even make it a little slower. So here's what it would look like. Now, something I'll do quite often is add what is called a drop shadow, and this just creates a realistic looking shadow behind that PNG image. Then usually I'll hop in and add a little bit of blur, but it is good practice to have this effect before the animation effect. So I'd recommend adding the drop shadow and then adding the animation effect. So if I just trim this off to make this a little shorter, here's what this looks like. Then just add some sound effects and you're done. 